So we can now connect the dual decoder to the valve solenoids. You want to use a quality waterproof connector for the solenoid connections. These are not supplied, so use the highest quality connection available to you in your market. If this connection short circuits to earth, it will cause a line fault whenever the station is activated. The DBRY6 connector, which is shown here on the main two wire path, is not required for the valve side of the decoder, but it's an excellent choice if you wish to use them. Remember, these are 24 volt AC solenoids. Both wires are red. If you have a DC latching or you have a black and a red wire coming off your solenoid, those can't be used with dual decoder. Dual is only for 24 volt AC solenoids. Now back to the decoder, you see we've got the red and blue wires that attach to the main path. You've got your black outputs and your yellow outputs. Number one, it's listed here as black, that's your first station output, and number two is the yellow. This is a handy setup when you've got two valves in the same box and you can control them individually. So it's possible for a dual decoder to operate two solenoids on the same output. So in reality, you could have four solenoids working off of this two station decoder. If you do so, you want to make a three way connection at the first solenoid and extend that connection up to the actual outputs. This ensures that both solenoids have enough current to operate properly. Okay, as well, you might have a valve in this box and you have another valve for this two station decoder 30, 40, or 50 feet downstream. You can control both of those valves with this one decoder. And to do so, you might want to use a DTS or a decoder to solenoid wire. This wire is uh, something made by Page Electric and it's also webbed much like the twisted wires so the wire stays very close together to reduce surge damage. Now don't forget you can go 100 feet from this decoder out to your second valve. In this case we have them both in the same valve box, neat and clean, two station outputs, we're ready to go. But if one of these was farther out you can use the DTS wire in black or in yellow and extend that out to that second valve. So now I'll go ahead and connect the black station outputs to the first valve in the box. And we're going to be using the DBY connectors. But first, we're going to attach one of the black leads to the first solenoid's red wire. Doesn't matter which black goes to which wire. Get them in there real good and snug. Take your other red, which is from your solenoid, remember your AC solenoid, and attach it to the second black output. Get that on there good and snug. Remember, take your time during making your connections because connections are key to a good two-wire system. You don't want to skimp on quality at this point in time. You really want good connections. So now we've got the a smaller size version of what this is basically. It's rated at lower voltage, but we're going to insert that wire net all the way in deep. You can see it's fully encapsulated inside of the clear sealant on the inside there. We're going to snap her shut. You want to hear that snap. As well, I'll do the same thing on the other solenoid wire. Get them all the way down to the bottom. Make sure he's fully enclosed. Split your lines and snap her shut. Get that good snap. So now we've completed the first two wire path through the decoder. Station one output is the blacks, goes to valve number one. And of course, this would be labeled with the station number from the programming. You want to program these before you put them into the valve box. Unless you have an ICDHP, the handheld programmer, then you can install these decoders first and come back after and program them to whatever station you want. But we'll cover that later in this video. So you'll complete the process by attaching the yellow leads, which is station number two output, to the second valve in the same manner. So once the decoder is completely installed here inside the valve box, a best practice is to drive in a piece of sprinkler pipe or a piece of rebar, whatever you have convenient on your truck. And we're going to end up mounting the decoder in the upside down position. An easy way to do this to allow for removal is to 
mount it sideways, and you can zip tie it right around the back. And the reason we're doing this is, one, it's easy access to the decoder, and it keeps it up out of the mud and everything. Although the decoder is 100% waterproof, it keeps it out of the, any mud and possibly standing water. But as well, what will happen is, if you have an ICDHP, the bottom of this decoder has all of the receiving portions to talk to the handheld programmer. So once you get a couple of zip ties around your removable portion of the pipe, you've got the base of your station decoder sticking straight up. We'll go into more detail with the handheld programmer later in this video, but this would be a best practice installation for the decoders within the valve box. And once you have them in place, you can trim off the excess zip tie. And at that point in time, you can very easily remove the decoder out of the box if need be and or set it back onto the stake. In the meantime, your, the cup from your programmer will connect right onto it and you can access the stations and start valves manually from the handheld program. But either way, this is an example of a best practice decoder installation on a stake.